Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Tor Olson, Software QA here at Digital Anarchy, and today we're going to be taking a look inside Blackmagic Design's DaVinci Resolve with our Flicker Free plugin. Flicker Free is our deflickering software plugin. It gets rid of the flickering that you get from time lapse footage, the strobing flicker from fluorescence, as well as the rolling bands from LEDs, and the light variances in archival as well as slow motion footage. And we're going to be showing off three of those examples and how Flicker Free is able to get rid of the light variances in all of them. And we're going to start off with rolling band flicker, which is what you see right here. These bands that stretch um, from the bottom of the screen all the way up to the top. That kind of happen very, very rapidly. And what this is caused by is when you're shooting with LED lights, they're turning on and off very, very rapidly at a frequency of 60 hertz. And that refresh rate, if you're shooting at a shutter speed that's out of sync with it, you get what we're seeing in this video, which are these rolling bands that go across the screen. So there you see the problem that we're having. And over here, we have the solution. We've added Flicker Free to this footage in a node that we'll show you in a bit. If I go ahead and play that, you'll be able to see that we're pretty much be able to get rid of all that flickering. And so we're going to take a look at the plugin itself and how it was able to take this and turn it into this. So if I go into the color panel and we take a look at our nodes, you'll be able to see that we've added Flicker Free in. It's under the Digital Anarchy banner that works like any other of the OpenFX plugins. You just drag it into your node. And as for the plugin itself, this is it. Our mantra here at Digital Anarchy is that if you buy software, it should really just work and it should be very, very simple. You shouldn't have to watch a bunch of tutorials or do a bunch of masking, mess with a bunch of histograms. It should just work. So the spirit behind that is represented in this preset menu. Any potential flickering problem you have, it's pretty much solved by selecting the designated solution from the drop-down. So if you have flickering happening in your time-lapse footage, you would select this preset, or slow motion, rolling bands, archival footage, etc. We found that for rolling bands, rolling bands 4, our preset here, works the best. And that's what we're using right now. But there's a little more to it than that. In this tutorial, we're going to go over all the other parameters just to describe what is going on behind the scenes in Flicker Free. So we'll start off with sensitivity. Sensitivity is telling Flicker Free how much of the frame we should be looking at. In this case, when we're getting these basically stripes that are happening across the frame, you're only looking at a certain portion of the frame, or only having to look at a certain portion of the frame. And that's why we have the sensitivity set to a lower value of 3. In cases where you're shooting something like time lapse, for example, you might want to crank the sensitivity up to 30 because the entire frame is being affected by the flicker. Next comes time radius. Time radius is one of the more important parameters in Flicker Free. The way that this plugin works is that it's using frame interpolation. So it's taking a look at a few frames before and after the current one that we're looking at and averaging out the color and uh, light values that those frames have. So in this case, we're looking at 17 collective frames, eight frames before, eight frames after, and the one we're looking at right now. Now, of course, this also means that the higher this number is, the longer a render is going to take, because we're going to have to be looking at more frames at a time to figure out what our average light should be. So it's something to keep in mind. Next comes all channels. So what this means is that when we're looking at any individual frame, we're looking at the individual red, green, and blue channels for that frame. And really, this should always be on. There's really no reason to keep it off. We found that Flicker Free doesn't work nearly as effectively with it off. After that is Threshold. Threshold is telling Flicker Free to look for its flicker within a certain brightness range. So the higher this number is, the more of a flux in light that we're looking for to get rid of. In other words, this parameter is telling us what the flicker is supposed to look like. After that comes Detect Motion. Now the reason we have this parameter here is because we're using frame interpolation and if something is moving quickly through the frame, it can be mistaken as flicker. 
So sometimes when this is turned off, you'll get this kind of odd ghosting or halo effect where Flicker Free is miscalculating something that's moving through the frame as Flicker and therefore trying to correct it. So in those cases, we want to turn Detect Motion off. Now, the thing about that is, is that Flicker Free doesn't work as effectively with it turned on. So the best thing to do when you're adding Flicker Free to your footage is you want to add it on with Detect Motion off, because that's when Flicker Free works at its best. And if you're getting that ghosting effect and those after images, you should turn this on. So those are all the parameters that are part of Flicker Free. And just to show you how Flicker Free works with uh, different kinds of flicker, we're going to be showing off a different. We're going to be showing off a different kind of problem that's similar to the one we're sh looking at right now. As I said before, this problem is caused by the LED lights being out of sync with the shutter speed that we're shooting it at. And similarly, this footage of this fluorescent light inside of a refrigerator. If I go ahead and play this, you'll see that we're shooting out of sync with the same refresh rate on a fluorescent light. So we're not getting rolling bands, but we are getting this flickering up here. If I play this frame by frame, you'll be able to see that every third frame shows that flicker. And this is what happens when you shoot in slow motion, which is what this video is right here. And over here, we've dealt with the problem. You can see we've been able to get rid of that flickering that was happening on the walls here. And similarly to the footage that we had over here, where we had a lower sensitivity, here we need to bring it up a little bit more because more of the frame is being affected. You're, instead of having strips of the flicker happening across the screen, it's really on, only on the walls here, the walls and the ceiling. And unlike the rolling band footage, we don't have to have as high of a time radius because the flickering caused by the rolling bands is really happening all the time. We know that this flickering is only happening every three frames, and so our time radius doesn't have to be quite as long. So in our final example, I'm going to show off some time-lapse footage. This is what the plugin was built for originally. If I go ahead and play this, you'll be able to see a lot of flicker. And this is a whole different uh, discussion. What this is caused by is uh, mechanical error on the part of the camera. What's happening when you shoot in time? When you're sh what happens when you shoot time lapse footage is that you're usually shooting in aperture priority mode. What this means is that you have a fixed aperture, and you're telling the camera to interpret what the shutter speed should be for you, so that you have a kind of consistent look in terms of brightness. Now, the problem with this, again, like I said, is that the camera is not perfect, and sometimes it gets that value for the shutter speed wrong, and that's why we're seeing these lapses in the lighting being able to catch up to make the look consistent. So if we go over here and go to our time-lapse footage that we have with Flicker Free attached and play that, you'll be able to see that we pretty much got rid of all that flicker that we were seeing before. The sunset looks a lot more gradual, and it's actually looking very, very beautiful. So this is a little bit of a different story. If we go into Flicker Free again, you'll be able to see that we've cranked up our sensitivity all the way up to 30, because we know the entire frame is being affected by that flicker. But that kind of shows off how these parameters are working together, and gives you a better grasp of how Flicker Free is doing what it's doing. So that's really it. This preset menu is where most of the work you're going to be doing is, and it really is a matter of finding the problem that you're having and choosing it, and Flicker Free finding the solution for you. It's really simple to use, and if you want to check it out on your own footage, you can go to our website at digitalanarchy.com, where we have free watermark trials. Um, we also have other plugins and a bunch of other tutorials and goodies there for your enjoyment. So thank you for watching. Again, I'm Tor Olson, Software QA here at Digital Anarchy, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.